Welcome, welcome back to another piano lesson with Warren. I trust you guys are ha having a wonderful Good Friday so far, and I trust you'll have an amazing Easter weekend. Today, we're going to talk about three techniques that you need to focus on to add movement, momentum, interest, creativity to your playing. Oftentimes, people just go straight to, I need passing chords because that's going to make my playing sounds good. But there are really three techniques that you need to focus on. And I'm going to talk about those and I'm going to explain them in sort of levels of hierarchy. Because we start from simple and then we go up to the more complex stuff. And if you sort of turn your focus in on these three elements that we're going to talk about, three techniques, then you should be able to start seeing quick turnaround, quick results in your playing because you know exactly what to target what to focus on. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's tutorial. Stay tuned. Don't go away. All right. Welcome back. My name is Warren McPherson. If you're new to the channel, so hit a subscribe and the like button if you haven't done so already, because I post weekly content here all sorts of content from me just jamming out, me doing TikTok duets shorts that I upload here to tutorials just like this, all sorts of informative information. We do live sessions over here as well. So if you want to take your playing to another level completely by ear, then you want to be subscribed to Piano Lesson with Warren so you can stay up to date with all the cool stuff that I put out. Now let's dive into it. How does one add inject momentum, interest, movements, creativity, all of these different sort of terms that you use to just say, how do I make my playing sounds good and sounds better? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's take the song, Because He Lives, right? In the spirit of Easter. And I'm in the key of E flat. So at the bare bones beginner's level, you'd probably have something like, Because He Lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone. Right? Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth a living just because he lives. That's sort of the more beginner hymn style version where we're just comping the pulse of the chords. So the pulse of the song is one, two, three, four, one. And oftentimes the natural inclination is to just do that. So that's the first thing we want to change. The first step to begin to add momentum, interest, creativity to your playing is to approach the rhythm. Don't worry about chords yet. Don't worry about improvisations and all this cool stuff that you get here thrown around on YouTube all the time. Focus on how can I begin to add some rhythmic creativity. So we want to move away from the blocked chord pulse to a more arpeggiated type playing. An arpeggiated type playing would be like. Mm -hmm. 
Now, for one to begin to achieve that uh, style of arpeggio style playing, we need to have a few things in place. Do your placement. Oftentimes, beginners like to do a single note in the left hand, and then they'll play a chord in the right hand. You want to not get locked into this position at all, because then it's hard for you to do that creative uh, arpeggiated style playing that we just talked about. So the best thing for beginners, and really anybody who plays the piano, regardless of your skill level, is to get comfortable doing an open voicing in the left hand, octave with the fifth. This is what I teach in my program over at PianoLessonWithWarren.com. And if you've been following me for a while and you watch me play, you notice most of my hand placement is always octave with the fifth in the left hand. Or for those who are more intermediate, we might do octave with the seven. In either way, getting that open voicing in the left hand, getting comfortable with that, is crucial for that arpeggiated style playing. And all I'm simply doing is moving away from one, two, three, four, or what we call quarter notes, to eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. So we subdivide the one, two, three, into one and two and three, kind of doubling up that rhythm there. And then we're just applying that to the arpeggio. And arpeggio is a simple playing broken chord. So take the chords that you've been doing that with and just start to break them up. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, right? All fears is gone. Because I know he holds the future sounds so much better right instantly it starts to sound a little bit more flowing and right pretty and all I'm doing I'm playing the same chords I'm just breaking them up now the beauty about the style the arpeggiated style playing it works for 99% of slow to medium tempo style songs and there is no rule that say you have to arpeggiate your, arpeggiate your chord this way or that way. There's so many variations, and so I challenge you to take this idea and practice it. There really is no way to start it. There's so many different ways you can do it. You can start with the left hand on bum, 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 which is just arpeggiating up and down. Or you can then start to mix it up, stuff like. Now the pattern doesn't even have to be the same on each chord or each beat. And that's the beauty about this. There is no pattern. There is no, it has to flow this way. And so you can really start to be creative with that. This is what I like about this particular pattern. Beginners can lash on to it intermediate because it doesn't really put you into a box where you have to try to remember specific fingers and which notes start first, which come seconds. It's like water flowing over a rock. You decide how you want it to sound, right? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. Now, step two. Once you get that arpeggiated thing going, you want to then start practicing to leave that register. Oftentimes beginners like to stick to one register so their hands don't move. So part of the interest and the creativity that you're looking to add is exploring the registers. So you're still playing the same chords, you're still doing your arpeggiated rhythm, all you're doing now is doing it in different registers. So you end up with stuff like Cause he I can face tomorrow. See, 
So you see, I'm really utilizing all the registers of the keyboard with the same idea of just I'm arpeggiating the chord. And by just doing those two things, you take your playing from bare bones beginner to a more strong intermediate, uh, uh, mid later beginner. So that's the first thing. If you haven't been exploring rhythmic creativity, you want to do that, right? Forget about fancy chords, runs, licks, and all of that. Take a microscope, shine it on yourself, critique your playing. Am I doing enough rhythm? Because without the rhythm, adding complex chords and runs is not going to sound good because then you're going to go back to doing those things on that. So part of why the advanced stuff sounds cool is because it's mixed in with some rhythmic creativity and use of registers. So think of all of that, which we just explained as number one, the first element, the first idea, the first technique you need to start working on. Getting used to arpeggiating your chords like that. Don't worry about the fancy advanced chords yet. Get rhythmic ideas into your playing. Now we're, we're focusing primarily on slow to medium tempo type of style song. Fast songs, up tempo songs, it's a whole different ball game, and we'll have a video that talk more about if you're playing fast song, what rhythmic ideas do I use? Because you can't really go to that slow arpeggiated thing when you're doing an up tempo songs, right? So that's for another video. Step two, idea two, technique number two, we now have to start looking at melodic runs. So now we're getting into a little bit more intermediate territory. Once you get your chords down and your arpeggiated things, you can start now to add little melodic lines over that to, to make it start to sound a little bit more interesting. So then you have stuff like, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Right? You see that, that little line I did right there? So the cool thing about this, or the things to keep in mind when we're talking about melodic runs, I think of these as connecting ideas. We generally introduce these runs when the vocal is on a long tone or there's no vocal happening at that point. We fill those little gaps with melodic runs. How do I determine what lines and what runs to play? Well, the first thing is you're gonna have to base, it's based on your chord, uh, the, the chord that you're on in the moment. So in this case, I was on the four chord, the A flat, so then, I know that I can start on any of these three tones of the A-flat chord, right? The second thing to keep in mind is your key. You can't forget what key you're in. I know I'm in the key of E-flat major. So all I'm doing is picking a tone from the chord that I'm on and playing the notes of the E-flat major scale. Now using your ears, you're going to tell, you're going to be able to tell how much notes I can fit within this little gap I have. The third thing to keep in mind is your resolution tone. There are two ways your runs need to resolve. So we talk about the starting, now we're talking about the ending. When we start, we start on a tone that belongs to the chord that we're currently on. Our ending note, the last note we play in that run, needs to either belong to the chord that we're currently on or the chord that we're about to resolve to. If it ends anywhere else, it's going to sound funny, incomplete, right? So in this case, when I did, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. So my next chord is an E flat, the one. So I made sure that my run end on the G. I could have ended on the B flat, or I could have ended on the B flat, on the E flat. But based on the trajectory of what, where my line was ending, it kind of made sense to end on the G. And so these are the decisions you have to be thinking about when you're doing melodic runs. Now at first, it might require some processing that slows you down. But the more you think about it, the more you work on it, this based on these concepts, 
the easier it becomes and then it also kind of gets more intuitive. You can tell right away where you need to end that melodic line and what note you need to end on. Okay? So that's how you make decisions. Once you start a melodic run, it's like a sentence. You need to follow that trajectory. Right? And then after a while, when you get better at this, you, you'll be able to come up with more ideas. So that's how you start to think about runs. That's number two. That's how you begin to add runs. Pick a note that belongs to the chord that you're on and form that melodic line based on notes of the scale or the key that you're in, which will introduce, includes some chord tones, some non-chord tones, but it's fine. It's a melodic run, which means Playing notes that are not a part of the chord is fine. As long as it's a part of the key, it should sound fine. And then the most, the next important thing is to make sure that you resolve that melodic line on either the chord that you're currently on or the chord that you're about to resolve to. If the chord that you're currently on continues for a long time, then you want to make sure that run probably ends on the chord. In cases like this, where the chords are changing fairly quickly, it makes more sense to resolve on the chord that's coming up next. And not that heart, that's how you really work and, uh, and craft your melodic lines. Now, let's talk about tip number three, idea number three. Creative point number three as to how we can add movement and momentum and interest to our playing. Now we're at the harmonic. We talk about the rhythmic. We talk about the melodic. Now we're at the harmonic, and it's the hardest part. This is where a lot of people always want to jump to right away. Passing chords, chord extension, right? All of these things, but that's, that's where we're at now. Oftentimes when I'm playing, I'm combining all three. Rhythm plus melodic plus chords. And when we talk about the chordal movement, we're talking about chord extensions, so we're going beyond triads, adding sevenths and ninths. We're also talking about passing chords, where we interject chords in between two chords, right? We're adding more chords to the song based on concepts. Now, if you're like, what are you talking about? Where can I learn more about passing chords? Piano Lesson with Warren has dozens and dozens of examples. I have dozens of song tutorials over at pianolessonwithwarren.com where I go from beginner to intermediate to advanced. So you see the trajectory as to how the song is supposed to be played, but then how I'm layering it with rhythms, melodic runs, to the point where I'm starting to add passing chords. So you see the trajectory, and I've done this so many times in different songs for you to start to see the pattern, because there really isn't any other way to just learn this stuff. You need to be taught especially if you want to learn it correctly and quickly, you need to see how it's being used in real life context of songs. So that's part of what we do over at PNLS with Warren. So passing chords and chord extensions, those are the primary two, and, and then we also call reharmonization. Passing chords, chord extensions, reharmonization, that's where we substitute a chord, right? We, we reharm the passage. I'm not going to talk about <laughs> all of the rules surrounding this chordal stuff, because then this video would be too long. And there are other videos that have talked more about passing chords. Like check out my, my, my gospel passing chords in C. Um, I have some videos right here on YouTube that talk about passing chords, and that will give you a better idea. But here are some things you can do with just this one song. So, because he, reharm, he lives. I can face tomorrow. All fear is gone because I know oh, he holds the future. And life is worth a living just because he lived. Right? Down to the seven, 
Dominant seven. Then I'm doing a three, six, scale run. See how I completely transformed that song? It sounds good, right? But if you notice, if you go back, you can see, okay, I can see the rhythmic stuff that he talked about earlier. I can see the melodic stuff. Now I can see all the crazy chords. Now let me just quickly explain to you some of the chord choices and why I did all of that. So we have the, because he lives. I know my next chord is a four. I can face two more, right? And whenever we have a one going to a four, oftentimes we can proceed that with a secondary dominant. So the chord that we're currently on, we can turn it into what is known as a secondary dominant, and that resolves nicely to the four. So all I did, I walked this root down to the major seven, then down to the dominant seven. And so rhythmically it sounds like, because, first of all, I forgot this chord. So this is just a reharmonization on the, the F. I made it into a five, because I know five is gonna resolve right to one, but then adding the flat nine, to give it that little a diminished dissonance. Like I said, you're not gonna be able to understand all of these crazy concepts in just one video. You need multiple videos, you need to see it across like 10 different songs so you can understand the pattern. And nowhere is better for that than piano lesson with warren.com. So be sure to check that out. So we have because he left right up. Then I can face. So I'm throwing this in here in like a chromatic median. This, this three dominant, which is gonna take me to four. Tomorrow. Then I'm doing this. Nice little gospel pass, right? So we're in that four, we just bounce it to the seven, the flat seven, or the four above. Um, so from here, and then oftentimes I come up here and I do. A nice little way to move the chords. And that takes me back to my one, right? But instead of going to one, I go to the, the, the one in first inversion with the add nine. So then we have, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, right? Because he lives, then I'm doing, Now this, all I'm doing is a series of chromatic dominance, chromatic diminished passing to get to the six. Because I know I'm going to six next. So I was on this three, this first inversion one chord. Then I just turned that into a G7, three dominant seven, which takes you to six. But then you can do a series of walk, right? So it was all diminished chords, right? A diminish, B flat diminish, B diminish, and back to, to my six. So, you know, and in context, cause he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. Fear is, then I'm reharmonizing this with the flat seven. 
right? And then I play the scale. So it is. You can think about this as the. This is called a uh, um, Phrygian scale. It's a mode, right? And it's basically the third mode of A flat. So I'm getting into a lot of stuff right now that, you know, I know I, it's not easy to break down all of these concepts in one video. But modes, right? So the third mode of A flat major. If we think A flat major scale, starting on C we get C Phrygian. So I'm playing that scale over this D flat major nine chord. Mm, all fear is gone. Right? Then resolve to well, this B flat sus 13, sus 4, whatever you want to call it. Mm, because then I'm playing this chord right here. It's kind of like, it's a weird chord. You can think of it as an A minor, A flat minor, 6, 11 thing. Or you can really just think about it as just a, uh, an A flat diminished, right? Because that resolved nicely to one in first inversion. So a diminished four, one in first inversion, right? Because I Then minor five, one. He, I'm doing now, holds G7, G augmented seven, holds the. This is a tritone substitution. It's an A, and it's a substituting this E flat. So all I'm thinking about is a two, five to four slipping in the G as a chromatic, chromatic median, then to the A as a tritone sub, goes to four. So in context, because I know oh, he holds the field. Now I'm on my four. Then back to, but this time I'm making it into a dominant seven. Because life is... Now it's the same chord as this, but this time I have the B in the bass. His words are uh, Actually, that's not what I did. Uh, his words uh, Oh, look at this weird chord. Right? Leaving. This is a tritone sub, dropping down to the two. Sus, and then I walk up a whew, because he lives. Now you might say, Warren, how the hell do you come up with all this crazy stuff? Honestly, part of it is experience. I've been doing this for a long time. Part of it is vocabulary. And this is why I always tell folks it's better, especially at the beginner, intermediate level, to focus on the, the melodic and the rhythmic stuff to improve your playing first because the harmonic stuff requires you to have a vast harmonic knowledge, a big chord vocabulary. And that's not something you just build overnight. It takes time. One of the best way to build vocabulary is through studying songs, which is why Piano Lesson with Warren has so many song tutorials. Because through studying my song tutorials, you get to see the chords I'm using, the context in which I'm using them, and then you go through a couple of those and then you start to replicate them on your own. This is how I learned it. This is how every advanced player I know learned it. You learn chords and build a chord vocabulary through studying songs. You know, I'm gonna learn it through reading some theory book on the internet or through sitting down and practicing scales all day. You have to study songs. And instead of just trying to do this on your own, it's better to do it under the guide and tutelage of someone like myself. So check out pianolessonwithwarren.com to learn more about chords reharmonization. So let's take this one more time in context with these chords that I just added.
because he lives. Woo. All fear is gone because I the future and, and life is worth a living just cause he lives I Anyway, me just having some fun there. Trust this video was enlightening, entertaining, and educational for you. Obviously, there was a lot compact in this video, a lot to talk about. I just wanted to point your attention to three things to focus on. Do them in that order. Focus on rhythm first, then melodies, then we can start talking about the harmonic stuff. Because the harmonic stuff is a well that goes pretty deep and almost bottomless at this point. I've been doing this so long, and I'm still learning new ways to harmonize and play stuff. And so that's why you kind of want to leave this part for the last thing you explore. Because without the rhythmic and the melodic creativity, the, the, these big chords are not going to sound too great, right? Now, as I mentioned, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date for when I do more content like this. And if you haven't visited PianoLessonWithWarren.com yet, you're missing out. We got such an amazing program over there. If you want to learn more crazy chords like that, that's the place to be. But then also if you're more on the beginner side, you're looking for something more structured that tells you what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and when to move on, we have an amazing practice path program that lists all the courses you need to focus on in the order you need to focus on, and then what you need to practice after that. And that path also continues up to intermediate and beyond. So regardless of your skill level, you will find so much benefit over at PianoLessonWithWarren.com. We have a great community over there, international community students from all over. All right, and I'm also available on all platforms, Facebook, Twitter, not actually not Twitter. We can skip Twitter for now, Instagram, but also TikTok. One of the things I do on TikTok that you won't be able to see on other platforms so easily is the duet feature, for those of you who are familiar with duets. So I oftentimes find singers doing solos and I'll, you know, put some pianos behind them with chords, runs and stuff. And that's just cool to see. And again, to learn, to see how I'm coming up with these ideas. That's available on TikTok as well. So it's a piano lesson with Warren on all platforms. You just type that in the search bar and you'll find me. All right, so until then, keep listening, keep singing, keep practicing, because this is how you'll grow as a musician. Have a wonderful Easter weekend, and we'll talk soon.